Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Leahy. I am the executive director of the Illinois Principals Association. Appreciate you joining us to talk about this exciting new program that uh, we are partnering with Aurora University to offer an alternative pathway to the principal endorsements uh, for those individuals that have master's degrees in education. Uh, we'll get into some of the details of, of that uh, specifically as we go, um, but we're excited to have you participate, learn more about that. Will there will be opportunities for questions, and even throughout, if you have something you want to ask, please raise your hand or just unmute and, and shout it out, and we'll do what we can to answer those at the time, but we'll make sure to, to provide some space at the end as well. So to, to give you an idea of, of who's with us here, well, let's go over the agenda first. Uh, let's let's take care of that. Thanks, Sue, for moving on. So we'll talk about who's going to be chatting with you here this afternoon. Uh, Dr. Ed Howerton with Aurora is going to give you an overview. Sue's going to Sue Holmes, Dr. Sue Holmes is going to talk about micro credentials because that's a, a significant part of this, and it's relatively a new way of looking at professional learning and preparation. I want to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, Arlen Peebles will be with us to talk about our Ed Leaders Network because this is the platform where we deliver the micro credentials, and then we'll have Q and A at the end. So to put some faces with the names, of course, we're here. But uh, we do have this beautiful slide that was put together by Kim Nair on the IPA team. Uh, here's who's with you. And uh, if you've got questions about anything related to this program along the way, please do not hesitate to contact any one of us because we'd be happy to, to talk with you about it and do anything we can to assist you. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Ed Howerton with Aurora University to talk about the specifics of the program and what it entails, how you get involved. Uh, because uh, while IPA and ELN, and ELN really is IPA, that's one and the same in this instance, while we are a, a supporter and, and definitely a significant part of this, Aurora still is the entitling university of the program. You have to be accepted and do what they need. Uh, so I just wanna make sure there's real clarity around that. Of course, we're here to support you but uh, when you got questions related to, you know, getting that endorsement done, uh, Dr. Howerton is definitely who you're going to want to talk to. So, Ed, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Jason. I first want to thank Kim for using a picture that's about 10 years old. I appreciate that. Oh. Sue, you want to go on to the next slide? So let's just first talk about what is the alternative uh, piece to this alternative principal endorsement program. It, it provides an alternative pathway to the principal endorsement. It's alternative to a master's degree program. There's about 26, 27 programs in the state that offer programming that lead to a principal endorsement. Typically, they're master of ed leadership like ours or ed administration. Um, but this program uh, does not have typical coursework. Um, instead, what we've done is we've tweaked our internship that we use in our face-to-face -face and our online program to better align to some of the micro-credentials that uh, we are using through the ELN. Um, the way that the program was designed, we went all the way back to the Part 30 rules that were established by uh, ISBE, the uh, joint uh, commission on uh, rules and made sure that we were doing the right thing, do, covering the right topics, uh, developing the right skills and dispositions for future educators and providing them with content that had uh, knowledge that they would need to use. Um, and we then used our NELP standards, which we uh, adopted last year um, and aligned the outcomes in the Part 30 rules to those Standards. Then we took a look at our coursework that we were using in our traditional program. We have in our program nine content area courses, such as law, special ed, law, finance, things like that, and looked at what those dove into and how those were covered. Uh, and then we took a look at the ELN micro credentials and created uh, a, what I call a, a do and learn program. So students that are in, uh, that take this program. Uh, we'll be doing an internship, a full year internship, three semesters with us, um, where they're doing. They're working with a mentor from their school and school district uh, and a supervisor from Aurora University uh, to engage in various activities. There's 13 activities in the program that cover all the different areas that are prescribed by ISB in the Part 30 rules. Um, more or less at the same time, they're going to be 
demonstrating their learning, not only in the internship output piece, which is what we call them activity logs, they're also going to engage in a corresponding ELN micro-credential where they're going to do a deep dive into a specific topic uh, to show their uh, proficiency level, um, what they've, in other words, what they've learned and what they've uh, done over the internship. Uh, so for instance, uh, one of the uh, part 30 rules talks about school improvement. Uh, we have an internship activity called school improvement and we've aligned it to fostering a data literacy culture, which is one of the ELN micro-credentials. Um, because uh, this, is a, uh, this doesn't involve coursework, uh, we're not locked into our normal in our program eight week uh, course uh, term, um, we can do this program in one year. So there's again, three semesters, um, 16 weeks each, so they cover, for instance, a fall, spring, and summer. We run through the summer semester where students are engaged in internship and completing the micro-credentials at the same time. It is an asynchronous program. So students are working on their own, working at their own pace, selecting which uh, internship activities they wanna work on when, and the corresponding micro-credentials uh, with support from uh, a supervisor from Aurora University, and again, their mentor from their school or school district. There will be a couple of sessions um, at the front end of the program just to unpack what this looks like and how to go about doing it with some directions and some time frames, but otherwise uh, students are working on their own. Um, so I mentioned that the program includes the internship and micro-credentials, no course content. Um, this is a is the approved program, so it does lead to the principal endorsement with some other uh, qualifications or requirements that have to be completed. And one of the neat things about this program is that uh, IPA has already worked with ISBE to have these micro-credentials posted on an educator's Ellis account. And so that will appear uh, on their account if, you know, uh, as, as districts look to hire school leaders, they go in and look at their Ellis account to see what their credentials are. They can see that, you know, they've done this deep dive into 14 of the ELN micro-credentials. So, um, Sue, if you are ready to go to the next slide, I would appreciate it. So in, uh, uh, again, going back to the requirements in Part 30, they're all pretty prescriptive in terms of all the schools in the state. We are doing the same thing with the alternative program. Um, we require an application supporting documents that include transcripts. Uh, we have a couple of written pieces that we require students to submit. Um, uh, there is an interview with faculty um, to talk about their experiences and present their portfolio of work that they've done as an educator. Uh, there is a two-year work experience uh, requirement, uh, either as a teacher or a school support personnel. In this particular program, uh, we do require a master's degree. That master's degree can be anything in education. It could be a curriculum instruction. It could be a technology uh, curric uh, say curriculum instruction, reading, uh, it could be in a content area. So uh, yesterday I interviewed somebody who had a, a, a master's in literature, for instance, um, and as an English teacher. And it also requires a 3.0 GPA uh, carried over from that previous master's degree. So this is just showing a uh, comparison to our traditional. We have two uh, traditional master's programs. Uh, one is in person and one is uh, online. Uh, you can see going down that the, and I want to reiterate that the alternative program does not provide you with uh, college credits, except for the nine credit hours that are the internship. We have three courses. They're each worth three credit hours. That's a total of nine versus uh, the traditional master's degree program, which is 36 hours. That's 12 courses. Um, it is asynchronous versus in person, which would you know meet in our program once a week or online asynchronous. Um, there is no degree. I want to emphasize there is no degree as a result of finishing this program. Um, students in our uh, in our ed leadership program, that's what the, the degree is called is master in ed leadership. I think others are administration, et cetera. Uh, it's one year to complete versus two. Um, Here's the additional requirements I mentioned earlier. In both programs, all of our uh, candidates have to pass the, they go through and pass the uh, evaluation license personnel training. That's a two-day um, evaluation workshop. 
uh, IPA offers it, as do a lot of the regional offices of education. And uh, candidates have to pass both of the content tests 195 and 196 in order to be offered uh, an opportunity to apply for the endorsement. Um, you can see the cost differential there. Uh, this, this program, uh, the alternative program, is just coming in under $10,000. Uh, that includes our costs at the university for the internship, as well as the uh, micro-credential fees. The micro-credential fees are actually paid directly to ELN and IPA. Um, and you can see that our master's program is, is uh, just a smidge over 17 grand. So, thank you. So as we've been working to roll this out, and I've been interviewing uh, applicants and um, talking to different school administrators, tried to capture some of the questions that they have. Um, again, to emphasize, this does not lead to a degree. Um, there, there's only uh, the, the um, credit hours for the internship, which totals nine credit hours. Uh, we, we don't take any transfer credits because there's, it's not a, it's not a degree program. So if someone, a couple of people that I've recently spoken with started a program elsewhere, we're more interested in this. And part of the, the, uh, the impetus for doing this is people, I've, I've talked to people before who want to go into school leadership. They, they, they feel they have a passion for it. People have told them that they should be a school leader. Um, but they don't want to go through a, a master's program. They don't want to go through, you know, two years of work and sitting in class and whether online or in person. So, um, you know, over the last few years, been talking to Jason and Sue, and uh, this is this is the outcome of those conversations. Um, so, but as a result, we don't accept any transfer credits from other universities if somebody has started a program there. Uh, the micro credentials themselves are not credit bearing as well. Um, although I will reiterate, they do show up on on an LS as, as a I think I call that a value add to your portfolio. Um, mentioned that students contract with IPA directly. Um, you will receive uh, a, a support from a supervisor at AU for the entire program. Um, that support includes support for the micro-credentials up to a certain point, but because the micro-credentials are assessments of what you know and can do, um, we can help you with the context, uh, understanding school finance, for instance, but you know, aren't going to help in writing uh, the required documents for the EL and micro-credential. Uh, the internship, uh, like with all our internships, are conducted in the uh, homeschool and homeschool district of the student and intern. Doesn't mean it has to just take place there, but that's where most of our interns generally do most of their work. Uh, and students can do the internship while they continue to work. They uh, do it during the plan, lunch. They do it after school, before school, the summer. Um, Program could be extended beyond the one year for additional internship costs. Um, and then one of the things that, again, could come across this question, uh, as far as reimbursement from a district, you really need to check with your school district as to what they'll reimburse for. For instance, the micro-credentials, because um, a lot of collective bargaining agreements or um, other types of uh, Policy and districts, you know, talk about paying for reimbursement for course courses taken at the university, but not necessarily this type of courses. So you would want to check with your school district and and find out if there's reimbursement. If that's something you're seeking. I think that's my last slide. So I'm seeing some questions. Um, that's that's a good question uh, from Kevin Boltz about micro credentials being used for PD hours. Sue, do you know the answer to or Arlen's yes. nodding? <clears throat> yeah, they actually can be used um, in the case of candidates looking for the principal endorsement. They certainly can be used for PD hours towards renewal. So each micro-credential is the equivalent of 20 professional development hours. And so that uh, completing this program would be a significant number of PD hours and would really fulfill your five-year commitment. Um, and that's at no additional cost. Thanks, Sue. Sure. Um, any other questions for Ed? Otherwise, I'm going to do a, a brief overview. And Jason, looks like you've on mic, so you want to? Yeah, I had a question directly to me. Just someone has already taken the teacher evaluator training, and then was curious about 
how does that compare to the 195, 196? So those those are separate items. Okay. So the teacher evaluator training and the assessment that goes along with that, that is something that's required that you do that was put in place as part of the Performance Evaluation Reform Act years ago. So you have to do that uh, in order to receive your principal endorsement initially. Plus, you do have to take the 195, 196 certification exams. And those are like the other endorsement types of exams that you've taken in the past, be it your basic skills or your content area, whatever that might be. So so uh, I hopefully that clarifies for everyone as far as how that works. So those are additional things that are required. Um, how is this different from the type 75? So that's a good question. Um, so the type 75 was the old certification, the old endorsement that was used. And it was a very general, it was called actually a general administrative general endorsement. Secretary. That's what it was called. And it was used for a whole, whole series of classes of, of administration. Um, and then the principal endorsement was put into place. The type, last type 75 was issued in 2015. Um, and, and really since then, even a little bit before then, for those candidates that got in early, the principal endorsement is what has been issued. And so, you know, the principal endorsement basically gives you this, the same opportunity to be a principal as the type 75 does. If you already have the type 75, you don't have to do this in order to be a principal. Okay. So, so please understand that. And we'd love if you want to consider taking part in the program, but that may not be the best use of your time or your, or your money. If, if you already have that type 75, and if you're wanting to make sure your skills are, are up to snuff, you know, to be able to be ready to apply for that principal leadership position, talk to us. And there might be some other things that we can do uh, to support you in that way. So just want to make sure that we're, we're already up to, to speed on that. So Yesenia, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Uh, if you've already got that type 75, just know if you're interested in being a principal, as far as the state is concerned, you do have the endorsement that you need. Um, I do want to just give a quick shout out. She may, you know, want to shoot daggers at me for this later, but uh, I want to appreciate Dr. Jen Kermis from the state board for being on this presentation with us. And Dr. Kermis was instrumental in, in really helping us get this moved along through the agency and, and getting it approved so we could all offer this alternative pathway, um, making sure it met all the, the state requirements and such. Uh, so we're sure grateful for that so that we have this opportunity because there's a need. And, and for those of you that already have master's degrees, we feel like you've already got a lot that you can bring to the table in order to, to you know, move along professionally. And, and now we'll, we'll work to make sure you've got those specific school leadership skills that you need in order to take on a school leadership position if you choose to do so. The other thing I'll, I'll say, there's a lot of interest in what's happening here across the country and one of my counterparts who works out in Alaska, Jen Rinaldi, is with us. So appreciate, Jen, you, you being with us um, just to learn more about what's happening here in Illinois with regards to this. So uh, grateful for that. So if there aren't any other questions, Sue, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Jason. And thank you, Ed. Um, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview, knowing that this presentation about micro-credentials could certainly last in excess of an hour, but I'm going to try to crystallize uh, the high points of micro-credentials and anyone that would be interested in pursuing the program after talking with Dr. Howerton uh, can certainly get in touch with both Arlen and myself or Jason. Um, for further information. So when you think about a micro-credential, it's really a mind shift. So a lot of people even have heard the term micro-credential and think that it is somehow a course and it's not. So a micro-credential is not a course. It represents evidence of your proficiency. So it is an assessment of your proficiency. And when you, uh, so you ask yourself, well, how do I develop proficiency in these areas if I've not gone through a traditional master's program for principalship? Well, there we are uh, what I like to call um, education, educationally agnostic about how people really develop their proficiency in these areas. So um, again, this is an asynchronous program. So you may develop proficiency in some of these areas through taking coursework. Um, IPA and ELN have developed coordinating courses, online free courses that relate to all of these micro-credentials. So if you're looking for additional learning inputs to develop 
a skill in an area, we have some free online courses for you to take. Uh, we have lots of courses in ELN that can cross over uh, transferable skills as well. You're going to be working through that internship opportunity. So you'll have folks there that are guiding you and can help you as you develop these skills. You'll also have, as Dr. Howerton mentioned, you'll have that internship supervisor from the university who's very skilled and experienced in these areas and can help you learn. Um, as you sign up for a micro-credential, you're also provided a very lengthy detailed document that contains uh, a deep dive analysis into what the skill is, as well as learning inputs and the research behind the skill. So you can really, if you're an independent learner, this is really a great alternative for you. And certainly those of you um, that have gone to workshops or uh, participate in conference, other ways of developing your skill in these areas. You should know that all of our micro-credentials, so we have 58 approved micro-credentials, 14 of those micro-credentials are um, represented in this program. They're all aligned to the school leader paradigm, which is a framework and a school leadership framework that was developed by the School Leader Collaborative. There are, I believe, 15 state principal associations that are now part of the collaborative. And Jason, you can correct me if I'm off by a number or two. Um, but this began back in 2016 with the latest iteration of the school leader paradigm being published in 2022. Uh, the micro-credentials are also aligned to the PCEL standards, as well as Dr. Howard to mention the NELP standards. So there's been a, a extensive crosswalk between the paradigm and the recognized standards, as well as the Illinois leadership standards. Um, our micro-credentials have been approved by the Illinois State Board of Education. Uh, they've also been endorsed by the National Association of Secondary School Principals, as well as an independent third party, uh, EdBridge. And so we're very um, excited and appreciative of earning those endorsements. Uh, just speaking briefly about the school leader paradigm, if this is the first time that you've heard of it, the framework really looks at two components when it comes to the school leader. Um, on the left-hand side of the diagram in front of you, you see what we refer to as the leadership intelligences, the things that people possess, the inherent characteristics, the dispositions that people have to possess to be effective leaders. So you see we have the personal, the systems, and the social intelligences. And on the right-hand side, which is going to be the deep dive that you're going to be doing through these micro-credentials, we see what we refer to as the doing side of the school leaders work. And that is also broken up into a Venn diagram represented by culture, learning, and systems. So we're gonna take a look at what those mean in just a minute. So we like to say that a leader is becoming while doing because none of us really ever end um, our educational improvement journey. Uh, you'll see that within this paradigm, we have a continuous cycle of improvement. You'll see the words there, plan, implement, assess, and reflect. We're continuously reflecting um, on our work and planning for improvement and implementing changes. And then the school leader doesn't live in a vacuum, right? They are impacted by the four, the a minimum of four contexts. There are often more contexts involved, but the individual context, which you see in the lower left-hand corner, or what you bring, you yourself bring to your position, the school context, what is unique about the school that you're serving in, um, the political context, not only of the school and the community, but also the greater political context as a whole, and then as well as the community context within um, where the school exists. Uh, we like to say that we're creating hope for all. We know, we know that hope isn't a strategy, but we are in fact creating hope for students as well as uh, for our, uh, our nation. When we take that right-hand side of the Venn diagram down, the doing side, again, we see that culture, learning, and systems domain. Each of the domains contains seven dimensions. So when we look at the culture domain, we see that the seven dimensions include relationships, student-centeredness, wellness, equity, tradition, celebrations, ethics, and global-mindedness. 
So there are seven dimensions in each of these domains, and each of those dimensions is represented by a stack of micro-credentials um, because that is the upper level skill, and then the skill is broken down into sort of sub-skills, and we'll see that in just a moment. So there are 21 dimensions of the school leaders work within the leaning or learning organization. So our published micro-credentials, what you see here, I said we had 58. So these are the stacks of micro-credentials that we have. We actually have 22 stacks. We have 21 stacks that match the 21 dimensions. And then we have a stack related to coaching that lives in that um, secondary or systems domain. Uh, so you see here equity, ethics, global mindedness, relationships, student centeredness, tradition, celebrations, and wellness. You'll remember those are the seven dimensions I just referenced a minute ago. So again, we have 22 stacks. Uh, so let's look at that in another way. Here's our culture domain. Here are the seven dimensions. So we're going to take relationships as an example. So we go from the domain level to the dimensions level. Now we're going to unpack relationships. So we see that we have a micro-credential stack related to relationships. If we take that down further, we actually have three micro-credentials related to relationships. We have building external relationships, building personal relationships, and building internal relationships. So as you see those titles, they probably resonate with you about the type of work um, or type of skill that's involved in having effective relationships in the school. Once you get into the micro-credential, for example, if we were going to be working on the building external relationships, we unpack what the essential outcomes are of that skill. And so here you see, and I'm not going to read these all to you, but you'll see that the essential behaviors really kind of say what uh, proficiency looks like in terms of having an effective external relationship skill. Um, so the ability to institute structures, procedures, and implement practices for positive relationships, uh, and, and so forth. Again, if you, when you sign up for one of these micro-credentials that are required in this program, you get a, about a 25-page document, and not to make that seem overwhelming, but the document contains all of this in very deep detail. And at the very end of the document is usually about a one-pager that tells you the evidence that you're going to be asked to submit uh, to show proficiency. We further in that document take each of those essential outcomes and break them down into details. So again, it's uh, even more detailed to help you understand uh, what that looks like. So the AU required micro-credentials, you'll see that we have three of them that live within the culture domain, embedding a student-centered culture, embedding an ethical work culture, and exemplifying ethical behavior. Within the systems domain, we have communication advocacy, driving mission and vi or vision and mission, evaluating operational systems effectiveness, fostering data literacy culture, and managing system logistics. Finally, in the learning domain, we have assessing student learning and growth, creating a results-oriented learning culture. Uh, my Zoom just, I, yeah, my Zoom, whoops, my Zoom just popped up, so I've got to move my little bar. Ensuring accountability, meeting all academic needs, providing effective instruction, retaining and developing staff. So the thing I like about the titles of these micro-credentials is I feel like they give you a clear understanding of what it is you're going to be asked to do in the micro-credential. Every micro-credential is- Hey, Sue, real quick before sure. jumping off to, to each of the, the pieces of the document, Kevin was kind enough to put a link into the IPA website where you can see the listing of all of these micro-credentials, which then also links you to each of the specific micro-credentials on the ELM website, gives you the overview, and then also provides information with which, with regards to what will be required for you to provide as evidence for each of them. So as, as you're exploring 
you know, what the program requirements are, that will be definitely something to take a look at. The other thing I'll mention, I did put a link also to where you can download a copy of the school leader paradigm if you're interested in, in seeing that. You don't have to be a member of IPA to, to get access to that, just so you know. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, we, we have one hour presentations on all of these topics that we're sort of trying to, to chat in about here in just a few minutes. Um, each micro-credential really has six parts. When you receive the document, it contains six parts. You'll see the overview, which really tells you what the skill represents and where it lives in the school leader paradigm, which domain it lives in and what dimension it's represented by. Following that, you'll see the essential outcomes. Now, those essential outcomes are really those proficiencies that we're going to expect to see at the submission point of your artifacts. The next two sections are really just informational. The section, the third section gives all of the research that supports those essential outcomes. And that's really important because this work didn't start yesterday. We've been doing this work since 2016 and really starting on the micro-credentials in 2017. So we are fully six years into this work. Um, following that, there is a digest of learning resources to guide earners in developing their skill. We are also um, very close to publishing a very uh, complete, uh, I would say, a listing of learning resources in addition to what you'll get in just that uh, bit in the, in the micro-credential document. Following that, there's an alignment to the standards. Again, that's more informational, but if you need to see or as you're creating your internship activities and wanting to write into how these activities relate back to the standards, that's a nice place for you to look at. And then finally, and usually the most important part is a description of the artifacts that have to be developed and submitted that will then be reviewed by an anonymous content expert and you'll receive feedback. And Arlen's gonna give you an example of what that process looks like. But what I wanna say before turning it over to Arlen is please don't get really hung up on what this, how complicated this may seem. It's really quite simple. Much of the document is really informational. And most of you are going to want to know, what do I have to do, Sue? What do I have to submit to show proficiency? The great thing is the process we've developed, we allow you to submit early on to get feedback, to know whether you're in, uh, you know, in the right, right frame of mind, if you're thinking along the right uh, lanes of what the uh, content expert is going to look for. And we give you meaningful feedback about what you need to change. Usually there are four separate artifacts that have to be submitted for each of the micro-credentials. Two of them are narrative in nature. One of them is usually a portfolio or something that is a little bit more substantive. And then Arlen, what was the fourth one? Because it's slipping my mind, but with that, I'm probably going to go ahead. Yeah, it's the, um, the, sort of the re uh, review of what you've learned during the, right. the reflection, the reflection application. Right. All right. So with that, we're going to talk just briefly about the micro-credential value. Um, I'm going to kind of skip through this. It obviously provides some tangible evidence of growth. You can earn AA or PD credit, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, you will have earned micro-credentials listed under other certifications uh, by micro-credential on your PEL. It is evidence of proficiency, and that is needed. That evidence of proficiency is needed to submit to Aurora to show that you've successfully completed those micro-credentials. It does allow for personalized learning when and where you would like to learn. And then it may lead to salary advancement directly or indirectly. Directly could be the result of you moving up into a leadership position. Um, indirectly, if your district permits some type of uh, compensation for earned micro-credentials, and that is really a district by district uh, decision. And then is there a currency or value to your organization? 
your work may be in alignment with the vision or goal. Maybe somebody in your organization has tapped you on the shoulder and said, you would make a fantastic leader for us. And this is a way that we think might be helpful for you to accelerate that pace. It will show evidence of growth. It is external evidence of proficiency. It can help differentiate candidates as more and more people become familiar with the micro-credentials as they live on the Pell. Individuals that are in the hiring process can go in and see what types of skills you actually have proven proficiency on. And then we tell, um, we tell school districts that you can help build your own leaders through the micro-credential process. All right. Are there any questions? I know that was a, as Jason likes to say, a drink from the fire hose of micro credentials. <laughs> a, a very uh, brief overview, but Jason, do you see anything in there? No, you've covered everything well, as usual, Sue. Any any quick questions for Sue on this topic? So on the ELM website, I will say we've got a variety of other video tutorials and just information about micro credentials more broadly. If you're interested in, in taking a look at that, I'll be sure to populate that, that link in the website. But at this point, we'll turn it over to Arlen to talk us through the portal and where you will actually engage with uh, with this overall experience. So Arlen, I need you to share your screen at this point. Okay, let me know when the website's coming through. You're good. Okay, thank you. So what we're going to look at now is the learning platform that you'll use to complete the micro-credentials. Um, they do sit on Ed Leaders Network. ELN has about 190 courses um, that are all online, on demand, um, leadership, teaching and learning, and even state-mandated training. But the place where you will go to find the micro-credentials that are a part of the AU program is you'll hover over micro-credentials in the top navigation and go down to the last option, which is the Principal Endorsement Program. Here we've got an overview of the program, uh, quick links to the webpage for admissions, and then a flyer that uh, Aurora has created as well. Most importantly at the bottom are the 14 micro-credentials that you'll need to complete as part of this alternative endorsement platform. So just clicking on the first one, driving vision and mission, this is gonna take you to the details for this micro-credential. Again, these are worth professional development credit, um, the ELN is bigger than just Illinois, so we talk about your state affiliates. We've, we've Hopefully, we'll get Alaska uh, soon after maybe this demonstration. Um, but there's about 15 other state uh, associations that are a part of ELN. We give you an overview of the micro-credential, the essential outcomes, and then we get into the requirements. And as Sue said, you've got the thousand-word narrative at the beginning to answer these five overview questions. And then the skill demonstration, that's where you will do some uploading of artifacts into the portfolio or into the MC portal. And then finally is that reflection and application, just a 500 word uh, summary of what you learned going through this process. Um, as we talked about too, each micro-credential has its own companion course on Ed Leaders Network. You can see this one is for leading vision and mission. It's a three hour course, and you can click here to be taken into that and do it completely online. And there again, they're all worth uh, PD clock hours. So if you get into a micro credential and feel like you could use a little more learning on this particular subject, we do have the support built in for online courses to go along with that. Um, you'll just, in, oh, go ahead, Jason. Arlen, before you move on there, just a quick differentiation about what we mean course with ELN versus what you might think with higher ed. This is not like a higher ed education course, a three hour type of course. The three hours is three clock hours. Right. This is an async. We use the term course because that's the term our learning management system uses. Also note that, you know, when you when you sign up and, and get your micro credential to take, you'll get access to the entire Ed Leaders Network library. But I do want to remind you that if you choose not to be a part of the program, but still want access to the content, all public school educators in the state of Illinois, due to our relationship with the state board, do get access to Ed Leaders Network at no cost. So if you are interested in all the various professional learning opportunities that are there, let us know and we'll make sure you have access. Maybe your school districts already have put you there and are using this for your state mandated trainings and things. That might be happening. But I do want to remind you of that as well. Thanks, Arlen. Yeah, very easy to get started with ELN. There's just a spreadsheet that you put your staff names on. Um, we take care of the upload and the notifications. Um, so you will be paying for this course um, through our ELN platform, the core, or I'm sorry, the micro-credential you'll be paying for. Uh, the micro-credentials are $180 each. 
And once you pay, you will then be put into the micro-credential portal. And you can get to the portal by hovering over micro-credentials at the top and clicking on micro-credential portal there. Oh, got to get that updated. This is where you will go. And this is what the portal looks like once you get logged in. Uh, right now, it's a separate login from your ELN login, but we are in the process of integrating those two things. So it'll be a unified login for EdLeaders Network as well as the micro-credential portal. You will see the micro-credentials you've got in progress, and I'm in quite a few of these here just to kind of go in and test them. You can see the badges that you've earned. Hopefully, you'll see all 14 of these show up here. And you can click here to go out to Credly where you can download the digital badge um, to display in your email signature, on your website or blog, um, and just have a copy and a certificate that you did complete this micro-credential. Going back to the in-progress um, page, we're going to look at driving vision and mission since that's our first one in the program alphabetically. This will take you into the getting started page. So you can see there are five steps. Um, there's this process to get started where we give you the information. There is a pre-check where you will upload an artifact. It will be evaluated by the assessor so you can know whether or not you're on the right track in collecting and demonstrating these skills. Then you go through and upload an artifact for each detail of the micro-credential, submit your completed portfolio, and at the end, you'll complete an online evaluation and retrieve your badge. This Getting Started page has a ton of information on it. Um, it, first of all, it's the place where you will download that 20-page document that Sue mentioned that's got all the relevant information. And then the next step is to watch these video tutorials that we've put together. And they're fairly short, five to 10 minutes each uh, on the overview document. Um, there is a community associated with each micro-credential. So as you're going through it, you will be put into an online community on ELN Connect, and you'll be able to communicate with any other participant who's going through the same micro-credential as you. Then there's a video discussing the portal, which is what I'll be showing you here. Uh, a video talking about the pre-check artifact, just to make sure you're doing the right thing. And then how to submit your complete portfolio, and then the, the end of completing the online evaluation to get your PD clock hours and your digital badge. Once you've gone through each of these videos, you mark the box that you've completed it, and you continue to the next step, which is your pre-check. As you can see, these are grayed out, so you can't really skip ahead to the end. You've got to go through it in a linear fashion. So let's now take a look at the pre-check and artifact self-analysis. So what I'm going to do here is choose one of the details that I believe I have a good grasp on. One of our um, participants actually said, choose the hardest detail. Um, that way you're getting feedback from the assessor on something that you feel like maybe you're not exactly the strongest in. So for this one, we're just going to look at 1A, which is an educational leader establishes rituals for students and staff members to articulate and personalize a connection to the vision and mission. So that is the first detail that we're going to choose. Step two is to actually submit an artifact. So you click on the button to do so. We're going to upload a new artifact. We'll choose a file, and this will open up the Finder or the, the Windows uh, thing on your computer. Uh, and I'm just going to upload this image since I'm not really completing the course. And then I want to give this artifact a name because I will probably be referencing it later on as I continue through the micro-credential and look at the other details. So this will just, I'll call this the ELN image. I add the artifact. It's going to publish it to the site. Let's me know that it was successfully uploaded. And then I'm going to explain within this artifact that I've uploaded, because a lot of times it could be a PowerPoint or a Word document or a PDF, uh, you're going to explain the location where you fill the, the, the detail there and give a self-analysis of what you're uploading and a narrative here so that the assessor understands why you chose this document for this detail. Uh, you'll save the narrative. You can upload additional uh, uh, documents if you wish, but one is fine for the pre-check. When you click Submit, the assessor, who is anonymous, um, will be notified that you have submitted your pre-check. And they will go in, download the artifact, take a look at your location and self-analysis narrative, and then they will provide feedback to you saying, yes, you are on the right track, this looks good, or here's what you need to do to be successful in the future as you add more artifacts. So I'm going to cancel that just so I don't uh, notify our assessor that there's something new. And then you can see the different various stages. You can see this is still incomplete. Um, sometimes if you didn't meet the requirements, you'll get feedback from the assessor and you can do a second pre-check. 
you actually get a second try at the full um, portfolio upload as well. If it takes you more than two tries, um, because we do pay the assessors for each assessment, you would have to pay again um, the $180 to submit your portfolio uh, a third time. So that's the process. You upload artifacts, give the self the location and self-analysis, um, submit the complete portfolio, and at the end, you retrieve that digital badge. And you will see those. If you need to get back to the home screen, click the ELN micro-credential portal in the top left. And this takes you back to all of the micro-credentials you're working on, because some people might work on multiple at the same time. And again, once you earn those digital badges, you can get them here from the My Earn Badges page. Jason, anything else to add? Well, one thing I just want to share with regards to submission, you do have to submit everything and show proficiency with all submissions, you know, and, and making sure that that everything that's required meets that level of proficiency. But it's also important to note that let's say you've gone through the first submission and the assessor has identified one submission that needs to be redone. You only have to resubmit that one submission, that one artifact, not all of them again. So just know that we do try to, to provide some deference for the work that's completed at, at that level of proficiency that's needed. We don't do the assessments on a Likert scale one to five. It's either a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and, and that is best practice with regards to micro credentials. The assessment is a blind assessment. So you won't know who is assessing you with regards to your submission. And understand that you will have multiple assessors through the process, which really, in, in my opinion, brings a, a higher level of validity and credibility to the process because you're going to have multiple sets of eyes of some pretty outstanding leaders. If you knew who some of these people were, I mean, we're talking nationally recognized folks here that have, were content experts in helping us develop these micro credentials and are have continued as assessors uh, for them overall. So we're, we're pretty proud of that work as well. Um, so we are at the point uh, for opening the floor for any other questions that you may have with regards to this. And so if you wouldn't mind bringing up the, the last slide in the deck there that does have contact information as far as uh, website addresses and, and all of that good stuff. But any anybody have anything here that uh, is on your mind, any questions that you might have, feel free to unmute or, or stick those in the chat. Jason, are we? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so this might be more of an individualized question. And if it is, I can send an email. But I have a um, I'm a school psychologist by trade. And then I have a director of special ed. Um, but I don't like so if I wanted to seek this principal endorsement, so maybe one day I could work as a principal, would I have to complete all 14 micro credentials? Or would those be selected based on the endorsements I already have? No, so, you would, go ahead, Ed. Go ahead, you go ahead. Well, here, currently, here say. <laughs> well, currently you'd have to take them all yeah. right okay. now. I mean, they're they're we, you know, and Ed and I actually had a lot of conversations related to this. And I know he put he in particular put a lot of work in and in, in selecting the appropriate micro credentials that needed to be taken to provide some deference for the the master's work that people could bring into um into this. Now, as time goes by. You know, we might be able to to look through and and provide some more customization to the micro credentials and and how many. Um, you know, what I would just offer. You know, you're kind of the first ones out of the gate, so we're we're trying to figure this out. But you know, there are stipulations of things that we have to make sure that are covered by what what rules we have to follow. As as Ed referenced, you know, a couple of times as as he was speaking earlier. So just things that we have to to do. So at this point, you know, you would you would have to take all fourteen. Yeah, and I, I want to also reiterate what, what has been approved uh, in, in Jason reference working with Jan Kermis at ISBE and her team is the program as presented today. So we we, we won't want to deviate from that. Sue, I don't know if you saw the uh, question Kevin posted about the assessment rubric. Are you able to respond to that? Uh, sure. So th there is not a rubric per se, because proficiency is meeting all of those essential outcomes. And that's why it's really important that the reader initially look at the essential outcomes and look at the details under those essential outcomes. 
because as Jason mentioned, we, we don't apply like a five, four, three, two, one. Uh, you are either demonstrating those essential outcomes as described in the document or you're not. And if you're not, we work, we have worked really hard with our assessors to ensure that they're giving you significant feedback to help you understand why what you show didn't demonstrate. Um, the other thing I want to add along with that is as Arlen was talking about submitting artifacts based on those details, be aware that often an artifact may mean, may meet rather, multiple details. So there's not a, an expectation that you have 27 different artifacts if there are 27 different details. Uh, as Jason talked about earlier, perhaps you have a portfolio of materials, you've put a PowerPoint together, not to say that a PowerPoint is sufficient, but that may be one of the pieces in your portfolio. You're going to describe in that submission to the assessor where you believe you're showing evidence of proficiency and why, using the language within the micro-credential itself, why you believe that shows proficiency. Uh, because what we found in the early days of this is people would submit artifacts and it became almost a guessing game on the part of the assessor to see where you believed you were showing proficiency and, and very obviously time consuming for them as well. Um, but I would say we have had, and I don't have a statistic to share with you, and obviously we're going to be working very closely with Ed and his group as we have people go through this process, but we have a lot of participants, especially out of the state of Missouri, who have had a very high degree of success um, initially submitting micro-credentials and receiving uh, passes. So, and I don't know of any recently, and Arlen, you may know of um, some, but I haven't seen any that have not been successful with correcting and resubmitting. So I think that's what gives you that sort of safety valve, right? If you were going down the wrong path and you got that feedback, it can allow you to adjust and you don't have to redo the whole thing as Jason said, you just resubmit that area or you hone in. Perhaps you have some more learning to do on that area. Again, we give you so many different learning uh, suggestions that it certainly uh, you know, can help you uh, to gain that additional expertise. So um, some of our folks that have gone through this say it's a bit like, I don't want to scare you off at all, but they say it's a bit like the national, the national board certification process for teachers. But what they've said is it's kinder and gentler and that the feedback comes sooner in the process and is much more detailed. So any of you that are familiar with that process can maybe make the connection to that. It is doable, and I will tell you this, we had a recently had a Missouri candidate who was not involved with the Aurora program, but through Missouri, the work that we do with them, they were able to complete 15 micro-credentials in the course of about six months. Now that person said, I wouldn't recommend that, but they were able to complete it. So I, I want you to know that even though this may sound like a lot, if you balance your time and you are a self-starter because right, being a independent learner requires you to be a self-starter and to stay on a, on a schedule. And, and I, I think Dr. Howerton and his staff are really good about checking in with people and, and nudging them along. So we're, we're very excited um, about this program. So it's important, go ahead, Ed. Well, I just wanted to piggyback off of that. A couple of, two, two quick things, Jason, please. Uh, one is that the internship activities are intended to help you set the table to write the micro credentials. Yep. Um, they don't they don't go hand in glove per se, but they are definitely there to help you collect the artifacts. Um, and we will also on the internship side hold you accountable to uh, really responding to what are uh, the requirements in that log. The second thing it, it, that we have found in the internship is 
activities that you do don't live in isolation based on the title of the internship activity. They bleed into one another. And so you can borrow things that you end up doing, artifacts that are created, things that you learn and apply them to other internship activities. And I think by and large then apply them to the ELN uh, micro credentials. So thanks, Jason. No, no, it's great. I, it's just important to note that we are asking for you to demonstrate proficiency of skill. This is not knowledge-based stuff. You know, we're not looking you to regurgitate some theory. This is this is pure application that you know how to to apply the theory. If if there is a theory to be applied, or or just you know can demonstrate the work in action. So that's that's what's critical in this, and and it's proficiency-based stuff, right? It's it's what we're looking to do more and more. With kids in school too, as we we look at at those opportunities for them. Now, as we are getting close here to the end, um, Ed, I wanted to um, I wanted to just note that you've got several already. I like think you said ten that are already ready to go into the program for the spring. You're working with a couple of others to get yep. them set up, and we have you one know, already going. <laughs> yeah, it's there. You go. So our, our, our these pilot. individuals they're looking to get started. Obviously, they have to apply and get accepted. But, you know, would, would it be if if they were to look to be doing that, is it reasonable to think that people wanted to start in the spring that they would be able to do so or in the spring semester? Oh, absolutely. So our dean for uh, a grad is online here, Emily Morales, and her team gets will get people turned around. They will dog the transcripts. They'll dog the applicant to make sure we get responses to the questions. And uh, they're, they're great at getting people uh, through that process and supportive. Appreciate that. For sure. So you've got some information here where you can find us up on the screen, uh, website addresses and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, if you go to IPA, you go to our staff page under the about tab, you can find where our emails and all of that good stuff would be. Uh, we also got quick access to where you can find Ed uh, on the micro credential page and all of that good stuff. Any last uh, thoughts or questions here from anyone before we sign off? You know, I, I would like to just kind of add a, a, a philosophical statement. So I spent, prior to coming to IPA, I spent the preceding 25 years at, at the district office. And the thing about it is you are going to learn this work on the job. If you have been in education and you've been through a master's degree and you are in a solid internship, you are going to learn more by doing and then be able to demonstrate your learning through this process. And I, I just can't imagine how uh, how people won't find this valuable. It, it's just it's the right strategy for a specific set of learners who are very self-directed and want to move through this more quickly because they've built up that level of experience of either being led. Sometimes we say we're led by great leaders and sometimes we're led by not so great leaders, but we've learned sometimes as much by the not so great leaders as we've learned about the leaders. And you are you have acquired so much knowledge just being in education that you're going to be able to apply to this. So I'm super excited. We are following the path of folks that are going through this uh, closely, and we are here uh, at IPA to support any of you. Our team, our micro credential team, has reached out to people. They've had Zoom calls. They've had phone calls. And so if anyone needs help at any time, we will be here to support you. You bet. Thanks, Sue. Can't think of a better way to finish it up than that. So grateful for all of you tuning in and staying with us till the end. This recording will be up on the website if you want to revisit anything uh, or send it on to others. We'd sure appreciate you considering doing that as well. But it's good to see you all. Good luck to you. Uh, we're grateful for you pursuing school leadership because we sure need you in those positions. So take care. Okay. Have a great holiday if we don't talk to you before. Bye now. Thank you. Night.